Hallelujah. Oh, we do. Hallelujah. We do wrap thee above all things this great festivity of his time. He has granted us life that we are alive. What a great blessing that is to have that breath. As the old Kiddushim would say, running warm in your veins. What a great blessing that is. We greet you all our friends, our listeners, our enemies as well. We greet all that have joined us on this Chetve Imat, Scripture Truth, that comes directly from the Torah. We must understand the very finite details of Yah's Torah. And the only way we're going to understand the power of Yah's truth, the power of his Nebu'ah, the prophecy, is that there must be men of strength, wisdom, and understanding of the Torah of Omar Yah. Something is intrinsically wrong when we are, as a nation of people, our interpretation of Torah or the prophecies, the Naba, the speaking, the utterance by the Ruach of Omariya, by messengers, men of great knowledge and strength, the revelation of his kingdom truth has come from one of the most vilest of spirits of Horam, one can imagine. That our minds have been trained by this virile whore. She's a sadistic Jezebel. She's a foul thing. And her gods run the gamuts of all gods. The Baptist god, the white god, the black god, the brown god, the Jew god, the Muslim god. They're all not worth a damn sack of beans, all of them combined together. I don't repent of that. Not one bit at all. It is one thing that we as a nation of people and our leaders must be gotten to master linguistics. That we understand the development of words. And we understand the legitimacy of words. That we can speak from a peripheral or a platform that is far greater than the intellect like, or the understanding of, the, of what we call the lay person. You understand? We must bring that home to them, Yisrael. We must. And so out of this diabolical scheme of hell... We find all kinds of prophets. It is amazing that those that say they are the children of Yisrael, they're speaking no different than the prophets of Baal. For their interpretation of prophecy, the Nabu'ah, the utterance of Yathruach, hell is the same thing that Billy Hinn is saying. Same thing T.D. Jakes is saying. Same thing Creflo Dolly is saying. You tell me that Yah has concourse with Be'el? He has an agreement with him? And so we as the true simple messengers of Yah, you tell me that the interpretation of the Nubu'ah, the prophecy that is uttered by the Ruach of Yah is the same as T.D. Jakes interpreted? And what about uh, my friend down here, Mr. Pimp Daddy Eddie Long? Something is wrong. Something is diabolically wrong. Something is drastically wrong. Well, you find all of these soothsayers that say that they are messengers of Yah, and yet the same line of prophecy, uh, they say that a prophecy is a naba. It is the utterance of the living power of Yah that, uh, that comes forth out of a man, out of the vessel that he has appointed to reveal. The, he uses the word gala to open up the mind of Yisra'ah to understand the intrinsic, the intrinsic type of character of Omar Yah and the things that I have hidden from the wicked that they should be revealed unto the Sadiq. So you tell me Yah has raised up a Benihin to tell us that, um, that there's going to be a famine, yet they don't even prophesy according to Yah's Torah. They're greedy dogs. There's a famine, but not for bread. But it's for the Shemach, the hearing of Torah. And men don't hear that. There's a reason for that, Yisra'ya. I want to teach and I want to do with some kind of punctuality, with uh, straightforwardness, uh, with wisdom and understanding. And I want to reveal unto us the secrets of Yah, what they imply, but the secrets 
and the mysteries of Yah, who are they revealed to? When Yah talks about his lats, his secrets, those things that are, they are intimate with him. He doesn't give that to any man. He doesn't reveal that to anyone. The messenger, the melech of Yah, the Yah dispensed like he did with Daniel Yah. When there was a time of great urgency for the revelation of the hidden things of Yah. He had to send a melech of great power. And when the messengers of hell uh, interceded and they realized what was taking place, uh, there was a great battle. There was a great battle. There was a great agony of battle uh, that that revelation uh, was given to one man. You tell me that the revelation of the time is given to Benny Hinn? Is given to T.D. Jakes? Is given to Creflo Dollar and these children of hell? Uh, you tell me that everything that is associated with Yah has to do with the Catholic ho It has to do with his house. It has to do with his nation. Damn the Catholic ho house. Damn all 1.3 billion, all 1.36 billion Muslims. Damn all 1 billion Christians. They're all going to hell. And that's a fact. And so the principles of the, of the prophecy of Yah based upon what they are doing, uh, or does it come from the inside? It comes from the house. I want to read this quickly. Turn to, with me to, uh, to the book of Wehira, to the book of Leviticus. I want to show you what has transpired to cause uh, a land that the Torah uses the words uh, Malay. It is so full that it is not only exceeding over the brim, but there is no room for the ruach. When something is full, is there room for anything else? So when you began to try to pour more of the matter or substance in that vase, it spills over. There is no room for it. And this is what Yah says to Yisrael. This is the impediment of your spiritual growth. That's why you cannot discern the prophecy. That's why the messengers today have no understanding uh, of what Yah is doing. And so everything that they speak today, it is based upon a concept of Christendom. They have heard it from the land dogs. They have watched YouTube. They have read the articles uh, of these beasts. And that's how they are speaking. Well, the Club of Rome, the Illuminati, damn the Club of Rome, damn the Illuminati. These are beasts. It has nothing to do with Yah. Nothing. He speaks to his nation here in Leviticus uh, chapter 19, verse 29. I want to move with a punctuary style tonight, all right? He says to us as a nation, we hear uh, Leviticus 19, 29. He uses the word kala. He said, do not prostitute your daughters, your bath. Those that bring forth the zero of life. The place where the zero, the seed, uh, is incubated. Do not prostitute them. Do not sell their minds uh, to this vile spirit of this age. Uh, do not give them over uh, to become practitioners uh, of enemies against you. Don't prostitute uh, your daughters. If you began to prostitute them, uh, he says, um, to cause your daughters... Uh, to commit zana, this horam that is so vile that the mind cannot retain the truth of Yah. It cannot ascertain nor phantom the faithfulness of Yah. And that's the mind of Yisraeli today. We have saw the birth pains of the power of Yahshua HaMashiach for every kind of damnable, vile, unclean spirit there is. We have sold ourselves out to every kind of damn God, every bill, every loss, and every greed. And our minds are not faithful to Yah. Our disposition doesn't display a faithfulness. There is no driven motive to inquire of Him and to behold Him and embrace him at all. You cannot prostitute your man. And that is what the bath represents. She's the daughter of Tizayon. She represents the beauty, uh, as one would say, the beauty of a mind. She is the beauty of the expression of all Maria. She is the value of that. That's what she should express. So don't prostitute your daughters. 
to Horam, Huaya, he says, least the land fall, not fall. When a Sadiq man falleth down before the wicked, Yah says, me old, uh, koach me old, little strength he possess. And he says, when you sell your mind over to Horam, when you give yourself over to prostitution, you give your mind over unto unfaithfulness unto Yah, he says that the land becomes male, it becomes full, it becomes full. He uses the word zim, it becomes full of every kind of vile wickedness that a mind can even think of. Wickedness that is beyond the threshold of the, of the penalty of Yah for death upon a nation and a people. He did not tell the heathens this. He told his nation that. He did not speak to the uh, uh, Philistines. He spoke to Israel. Do not sell your mind. Do not give yourself over unto entertaining this vile nature of the gods and the spirits of this land. When you do that, you're going to find this malay. You're going to find your mind full of wickedness. No, from a Baptist mind cannot come the Naba of Yah. From a church of God in Christ, you will not understand the revelation or the uncovering of prophecy. So you will have them all saying the same thing. They are going to be a famine in the land. Buy some gold. Buy some food. Store up that. They all are saying that. From the Benny Hens to the Nicodine drugstore corner one. They are all saying the same thing. And no one moves with urgency. For expectation of the matter to come because it is an empty prophecy. But when the Nabu'ah, when the utterance of the Ra'ach of Yah, when it speaks unto the messenger, he interprets it by the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach. You cannot come any other way, Yisrael. It comes only through that mind. Through the wisdom of that mind. Through the knowledge of that mind. And so they all are saying the same thing. Whether they're Methodist or Baptist, Pentecostal or Church of Whole House in Christo, they're all saying the same thing. We think we are wise people, and we're not wise. I was sharing with my Zachin Yeramiyah two letters the other day. I said, these are two different individuals. I said, please come to St. Lucius and start something here. And this was in one letter. Something has to be wrong. If the Christ that this Christian church is serving and say that there's revelation of his knowledge and the one that I'm serving, whoever has no association, something got to be wrong. It's either they are right and I'm wrong or they are wrong and I'm right. He says, I don't buy because I know that's pagan. Please come to our island and start Something here. You understand Yisra'ah? And so what Benny Hinn says, it has no value to Yisra'ah. For what these superficial young Naha, they're youthful in Torah, and they're saying the same thing, the Illuminati, the Club of Rome, damn them all. Damn the Masons. I don't give a damn about their secrets. I don't give a damn about the eastern stars. That doesn't trouble me one bit at all. For the wicked shall do wickedly. And they shall not understand. They shall not be known. But it's one thing about the Sadiq. They understand both Tanyan and the Mishpatim, the judgment of Yah. They understand both. But the wicked doesn't understand that. And so what a wicked man does, he reverberates the same trash. They're liars. These are dogs out of hell. They have been raised up by the deities of darkness. That's why they all speak the same thing. Something is wrong if I'm speaking the same thing Benny Hinn is speaking. Something is wrong if I'm talking like T.D. Jakes. Something gets wrong if I'm talking like Eddie Long. 
Something gets wrong if I'm talking like Creflo Dollar. Something gets wrong if my prophecy uh, is based upon this Jezebel, uh, Maryland, uh, Miss White that started the Seventh-day Adventists. Uh, something gets wrong, Israel. Can't be right. Can't be right. And all of their prophecies are the same. Daniel Yah's prophecy was not the same. It is vital that we understand, be no discern the true prophecy of Yah Yisrael. It is not coming the way these people are talking. The mark is not some damn chip. It's a damn lie. It's a vile lie. How, how, how would Benny Hare know that? These are the lots. These are the secrets of Yah. And he has ordained messengers uh, of his bosom to declare them. Well, I'll make things known then. Let me move, all right? The secrets of Yah, who are they revealed to? And the certain aspects of Yah's secrets, hallelujah. I want to read quickly from Ezra, the third book, of the Sefer of Ezra, Ezra 15, 1 and 2. Listen to this. Yah says unto his nation, Yisra, Yah, he says, behold... He says, I want you, Ezra, to Daba, to Amad, to speak with great forcefulness of utterance. He said, I want you to speak in the Ozin, the ears of the I end, uh, the wisdom or the, or the intellectual and the spiritual capacity. Speak to both in the ears of my people. He is talking about the possession of Yisrael. Those that prevail against all opposition of hell. Ezra third chapter, I mean Ezra third, Ezra chapter 15 verse 1. He said, I want you to speak in the ears of my people the words of this Nebuah, the prophecy. I want you to declare in their ears the wisdom of prophecy. He says, which I have listened to this. Now he used the words put. He says, I have no thought. Yah uses the word put, my ark. It means that he has bestowed, he has placed that. He says, which I have put. He has not put it in these devils' mouths. He has not put it in these damn Christ thumping, Jesus Christo thumping, liars. He said to that nobi, that prophet, he says, I want you to speak of this nubu'ah, this naba. It is the utterance of the ruach of Yah that opens a man's wisdom, his mind, his conscience, to know that it can only come from Yah. It is beyond the comprehension of man. So Yah has to speak this. He has to put this. He has to put this in the earthly vessels, you understand that? He has to know thun. He has to bestow. He has to grant it to be. He says, which I have put, not in every man's mouth. He said, put it in your mouth, Ezra. He said, which I have put in your mouth, says Almighty Yahweh. He says, and this is what I want you to do. I want you to cause them to be written, this hatab, to be inscribed, to be printed, to be written on paper for what? For they are faithful and they are true. The prophecies of Yah, they're faithful and they are true. Yah must put this in a man for him to speak, for him to nabat, to prophesy of the prophecy of Yah. And everything I'm hearing today by gold, silver, Get you some seeds and store it up. Learn survival. You're not going to live by your damn weakness of your strength. For the just of the earth that he justified. They live by imun. They live by faith. No other way. You're not going to survive. Don't worry. I got something coming for you on the Shabbat. All right. This is the preface. Before that, he said, I shall put this in your mouth. I want you to cause it to be written. When Yah puts it in a man's mouth, when he put it in the Novi, the Novi in the prophet's mouth, he has caused it to be written for who? For us. We are my people, are we not? We are my people. And only those that have the Ruach of Omar, Yah, their ears will be open to understand. 
all of their minds, their leba will be open. Ya uses the word patach, that their minds are brought to the simple, uh, 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 simple elevation, whereby they can receive that truth. It doesn't, it doesn't jar with the intellectual. It doesn't jar in the intellectual mind, Yisra'ya. Yah says, I have put this in you for you to write it and speak it to my people. That's what the Nubu'ah is. It is not about the club of Rome. It's about a nation of his people. Whereby every kind of vile, insidious corruption arose out of them. It came out of them. I heard a man say, and I have said this, that I, I feel like I've, I have failed the people when I've seen what have transpired among us. And then the other day, the Ruach of Yah just corrected me so wonderfully. Uh, as the Ruach began to point out to me, then Moshe fell the people. He brought a people out of a land, but in their wicked hearts, was, uh, it was a hardness against Yah. He did not allow them to go in, and the ones that went in, they were more wicked than the ones that came out. Yahshua came and he came to give us power to overcome sin. Then he fell the commands of Yah, not at all. Uh, Obadiah didn't fail ya. Ezra did not fail ya. He said, cause their ears to hear. Only ya can cause us to hear Yisrael. He can only give us that Imuna to believe him. And the Imuna come by hearing uh, the Nubu'ah of Omar. Yeah, I, want to, I want to take my time, but I'm against time too, all right? Uh, hear this in Dibarim. <clears throat> Deuteronomy Dibarim. Chapter 29, verse 29. Who are the secret things of Yah for? Who are they revealed to? I, I want to read this prophecy, this Nubu'ah here. Who is revealed to? Dibarim, the Romany chapter 29, verse 29. He speaks about the Satya, those things that are hidden from the perimeter of man. And these things that are hidden from this religious prostitute that prostitute our daughters the baptist prostitute their baptist daughters the methodist prostitute their methodist daughters just like the hebrews prostitute their daughters just like our zohain brought out to us last week that they brought them down to the valley of hiran and they offered up their babies unto Molach and melcham so don't give me this bull yisrael we offer above your shoes every kind of vile image of our mind and every kind of unclean thing. We cause them to be subjected unto that. He says here in Debarim 29, 29, he speaks about the satta, those things that are secretive. Those things that are hidden from the eyes of man. Those things that are hidden from the wisdom of man. This is hidden from T.D. Jakes. This is hidden from Benny Hinn. This is hidden from those that declare that they are Hebrews. Yah says the secret things, those things that I have concealed in the message of Yahshua HaMashiach, not in some damn Jesus. I will, man. Not in some vile demonic thing they call the damn Holy Ghost. I'm a student. I can ask, I won't do it. I don't, as Zach King said, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I have search words. That's all I do. I don't search out messages. I search words. When I see words like holy and ghost that have derived from what we call the Sankris language, one of the 17 major languages of India that deals with one aspect of the Indian's life, nothing but Hinduism. The gods, the Brahmas, and all of that. And so the ignorance of these men, they would rely upon that language to bring about expression like Savior and all of that. No, he is a, he is a sweet fragrance unto Yisrael. Yeah. He is no damn Savior. And I will attack it without any repentance. I'm going to do it relentlessly. And I'm not going to apologize to one wicked beast of hell. I will beat on the beast of hell. I will kick his head in. And that is the beast that rises up in my mind to oppose Almighty Yahweh. Let me move quickly. 
It says the secret or the sata, those things that are hidden, and they're hidden carefully, things belong to Ya Our Abba. And he says to us, but those things which are gala, they've been revealed. The disclosure of that matter, he said they belong to us. They're things that he has to reveal, they belong uh, to us. And he says, and the children forever, for what purpose? Why does Yah reveal his secrets to us? There's only one purpose. Can I show us? It's right here in this. That we may do that D.O., that we may assa, we may fashion our minds, our beings, our bodies, our thoughts, our concepts, that we may do all code that is written in the Torah of Yah. Yeah. And if Yah was causing his Nabu'a to speak from a wicked dog's mouth like T.D. Jakes or Benny Hinn, then the people would do all that is written in the Torah, he reveals his lats, his sata, those things that have been concealed from the foundation of the world for one thing. He gala, he uncovers, he moves back the cloth that we may know the power of Abba and that we may do asa, fashion ourselves, our minds, our homes, our will, our desire to do all that is written in the Torah. Did he not tell Ezra to write it on paper? Does he not say here unto Moshe that we may do all the words of this Torah, that we may do all the dabarim, all the promises, uh, all the words that I have spoken that is in the Torah, that we may fashion our lives accordingly, or for you to go buy some damn chicken wings and dry freeze them, or get you 50 pounds, or 50, 50, those, what are those big barrels? Put dry beans in that thing, and that's going to save your life. That's stupid. We need a lechum of bread that is greater than the bread that we grow in the fields. We need the bread of life to sustain us. I don't give a damn. You can build your barns big. You're going to say, you fool. You have relied upon that. You have not relied upon the lechum, the bread of life, Yokshu Hamashiach. Your barn shall go down to the drop of hell. And that's a fact. I had a call from a young man today from Indiana. He says, when I listened to that man, he didn't know who he was talking to. Even the day one says to me, I was talking to Anak, he says, I tell you that, the whole gathering in California, uh, David, he said, he brought it out. Everyone said that this out brought that out so plain and simple that he made it right. You understand? This brother says to me today, he says, you know what? I just come out of the apostolic church. He said, but I, 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 although I don't know, when I heard that man down there, I knew that that was truth. No one had to tell me. I knew that it was truth. Why? Because Yah's truth to do his Torah make us free from sin. And we shall know, we shall yada, we shall experience the truth. And the truth shall make us, it shall bara, it shall create the image of Yah in our mind. Not this physical person will create the life of Yah, the ruach, the power, that ruach that caused the testimony of Yahshua to come alive, Yisrael. Yeah. So the secret things belong unto Yah, his sata. Those things that are hidden and sealed. And that which is revealed belongs unto us. So he reveals Moshe, reveals the great power of his, his testimonies. He reveals that unto us. He makes known unto us the power of Yahshua HaMashiach. For what? That we may do all. That we may do all. That is in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. So the prophecy of these individuals today. Telling people to buy gold and silver. Telling them to get things to survive. For me to live is Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. For me to die is the mastery and the accomplishment of the Torah of Yah in me. Yeah. This life has no value yeah. without Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. Those secret things belong to him. 
and he guards them. I will show you. Can I move quickly? I will. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look, uh, uh, Shaul speaks emphatically to us here in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinth, yeah, 1 Corinthians 2, 6. I want to move quickly. Hallelujah. I want to express unto us this profound utterance of this nobi, the shalishach. Uh, the profound chukmah, the wisdom of Yah, that is contained. That's why when he reveals the secrets to us, uh, it makes us more indebted to him. That we desire to do all that the Torah commands us. Uh, you tell me in Christendom they want to do Torah? You tell me among those that say the Hebrew they want to do Torah? It is the massaging of the flesh. They masquerade the flesh more than the creator. They become creature worshippers instead of the creator. And that's a fact. Hallelujah. Shaul speaks here, 1 Corinthians 2, 6. He said, I want you to understand, although we speak the hukmah, we speak the skillful knowledge of Yah, that is the hukmah, how to battle against the deities of hell and the powers of darkness. The dark concepts and the thoughts uh, that infill, uh, that uh, tries to uh, overtake your mind or the mind uh, of your sure. How bet? We speak wisdom. <clears throat> he said, but I want you to understand, uh, we speak the wisdom among them uh, that are complete, that are tomine, that are perfect. Their mind, their desire, their passion uh, is to please Almighty Yahweh. Uh, <clears throat> he says, uh, yes, uh, not, no, no, not the wisdom of this Olam Viat, not the wisdom of this world. He says, nor the powers, the czar, the princes uh, of this world. He said, all that comes to nothing. It comes to low. It has no relevance. It has no power. It has no sustaining endurance, none whatsoever. He said, but we speak, we, amah, we utter with great passion. We speak the hukmah, the wisdom of Yah. He said, we speak that in a lot, in a lot. He said, we speak it in secrecy, in a mystery, in a mystery. Why? He said, because this wisdom is hidden. It is sata, it is concealed. He said, even the hidden Wisdom, which, as they were saying the day, this will blow your mind. Which, Yah, Almighty Yahweh, ordained, made it to be established before the world to our splendor and our kabuls, the great honor. He said this was done before we were conceived before we were ever thought of, you are, he is. And so there's a wisdom that is so excellent. There's a mystery. The lots of Yah, the secrecy, he doesn't, no fun, he doesn't bestow this upon every man. It is so pristine that a melach must dispense it. He sends the messenger from above uh, and he brings and calls. Uh, he brings it to the simple messenger and he calls his mouth, his feather to be opened. And the cause of yours, Isha, is placed upon uh, his lotion, his tongue. Uh, now! That's how that comes. He says, so excellent, so powerful, but it is for your splendor, for your, for your beauty, and for your great kabod, an honor that the world doesn't know. There's no honor among the sons of hell. He was a thief and a murderer from the beginning, and that's all this world is, thievery and lies and murdering. Hallelujah. See, even the and he goes on to give us a great a knowledge of that in the next verse. He says, which none. Do you understand? The word none in the Hebraic vernacular is lu. Cannot be no. No, which none low. 
There is no exception, could be. There is not one centimeter of a chance that they would know. He says, not which none of the princes of this world knew. None of them knew the wisdom of Yah. None of them knew the power of his Hamashiach. For had they known it, for had they experienced it, for had they perceived it, for had they done that, they would have not impelled the king of splendor to, and honor. They didn't know. Just like these beasts today don't know Yahshua HaMashiach. They will never obfuscate his name for a damn lie. A created damn false image of hell. A beast, a demon image, a shot dam of darkness. And to cause the mind of Yisra'ya to commit horam with this damn lie. Yisra'ya has always done that was raised up by hell to draw and to seek out the true zira of Yah. Just like they did not know your sure Hamashiach, the excellence of the wisdom of Yah in that clay, they didn't know it. They didn't understand that. Not only those like uh, uh, Pontius Pilate, uh, but we're talking about the princes uh, of the powers of the air. They did not know uh, they had no concept uh, because if they had known, they would have never caused that uh, to be planted in the minds of those that say that they knew Yah and the ones that Yahshua came for uh, yeah. to cry aloud away with him. Yeah. We sell ourselves to Barabbas. Uh, give us Barabbas. Uh, that one that caused insurrection, the one that is a liar at our feet. Give us the devil, is what they said. And that's what they said. They give, they give us this damn lie. A lie is a lie. Sunday is not the Shabbat. It's a damn lie. And so they say, give me the lie. T.D. Jake said, give me the lie. I don't want that truth. So you tell me that if I'm a messenger, a simple messenger, that I will speak from the same uh, platform that someone like him speak. So my wisdom of prophecy is spoken like T.D. Jakes. Uh, my understanding of Gilead revelation is, is just like T.D. Jakes. Uh, and the strongest thing I got is the Club of Rome, the Luminaries, uh, uh, and the Bill Burgers. Damn them all. Yeah. These are dogs. Yeah. These are children of hell. I don't fear them. And this is where... The essentials of prophecy come from the Nubu'ah. No, it comes from Yah. It comes from Yah. He doesn't reveal his secrets to every man. He doesn't reveal his secrets to every people. He raises up among his nation. And Ezra, that he says to him, it's written in that book. Now I want you to eat the pages of that book. It's going to be bitter going down into your belly, uh, into your victim, into your heart, your, your bowels, uh, into your kidney. When it gets there, the richness of the sweetness uh, and the fragrance uh, and the flavor of the peri, the fruit of life, uh, shall spring from your loins uh, and you shall speak uh, like no other man speak. Hell, they all speak alike. They all speak alike. Mark of the beast is coming. They got to put chips. You damn liars. There are no chips. They're not putting no chips. These are damn liars. Benny Hinn talk about it. You know it's a lie. It's a damn lie. It's a flat out lie. If they believe that with the debacle of the great mayhem, if they believe it, how do you do it? Please. Tell me how do you do it? It's stupid. It's just flat out stupid. There's a mind that is greater than a chip. There's a spirit that is pervasive. It doesn't need no chip. And that's a fact. These are liars. And all those that speak like that, they're devils and children of hell. They don't know ya. When someone like Ken LaHaye and his brother can write books on that, and all these principles I remember in the early, in the latter 70s, that when I would hear this, I would never buy it. I've never read their books, but I knew it was there. A man that called himself dear to me, he gave me two books I remember. In about 1980, 81, he said, read these books. And it was about the chip. And all of us said, I looked at the books, uh, 
I couldn't read them. There was no interest in my heart for that because I knew that if these men were the interpreters of, in all of my ignorance of truth, it could not be from these men. It is something that is totally diametrically opposite of what they're saying. Diametrically, my quotes, my email. It is far from uh, their analytical skills. Uh, this comes from the mind of Yah. Come from here. They're liars what they are. You've read their books. They watch these devils. And they're saying the same thing. No different. Nothing. Was there a man that came speaking like Yachahan, the Emesa, or Yoshua? No man spoke like him. When when Tisephaniah, Asaphonia, Stephen began to speak, hell, they went crazy. They got so blind, they ran upon that young man with their teeth and they gnawed on him. And he looked up and saw the Hashemayim open up. So the greatness of his about he said, I don't have no problem with this, boys. Yeah. Come on, he didn't speak like the rest of them. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Moving on. None of the princes knew, for if they had known Yisrael, they would have never impelled, they would have never destroyed Yeshua Hamashiach. That's why these devils today don't know. That's why they have their Jesus. The Baptist Jesus is different than the Methodist. The Methodist Jesus is different than the white Methodist. And the black Methodist is different than the, than the Jewish Methodist. And the Jewish Methodist is different than the Greek Methodist. Damn, they're gods. Their gods are dogs. That's what David said to that Philistine. <laughs> he said, you, uh, so you send this little dog out here to handle me. And David said, the dogs, that's all right. You come out against me with all your protection. But I come in the name of Almighty Yahweh. I come in that strength. He said, the birds are going to, they're going to pick your funky, wicked flesh. And there shall be open up the gates of hell and every kind of unclean thing shall come. Every kind of vile thing shall come. And that's what Yah has done. He has opened up, oh, not, not the earth here, the hell of that earth. But he has opened up this mind that is vile, wicked, is full of death, and there is no life in it. There's only life in one mind. That's the mind of Yoshua HaMashiach. Can I express you the great depth of the mysteries of Yah? Where Shaul, uh, he speaks to us here in Romans, Romea, chapter 16, verse 25. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says to us, Yisraya, now to him that is able uh, to establish you uh, according to my Mizurach, according to the teaching of the wisdom that I speak. Who is able to do that? Only one is able to establish us, to make our feet sure. To establish us in what? Torah, the living Torah. That we are in Yeshua HaMashiach. He says, and the decoration of the preaching of Yeshua HaMashiach. He says, according to, now this is what it's according to. According to the revelation, according to the revelation of the mystery of the lot. Of those things that have been concealed. This HaMashiach was concealed. He was concealed before the foundation of the earth because uh, he was the principle of the foundation of the earth. Uh, he was the word spoken that caused the earth uh, to rise up uh, out of the mind of Almighty God. Before it was, he is. Uh, he is the power of the utterance of Yah's voice. Uh, he is the living voice of Yah. Zakain tries to tell us uh, he is the call, uh, he is the high, he is the life of Yah. When Yah speaks, he speaks life. Even in death, there's life. That's who he is. He is the light of Yah's visage. When you see him, you see the visits of Yah. You see the Ponim. As Yah spoke to Moshe, Ponim, face to face. As a Rech, as a friend. That's what he was. Hallelujah. He said, this message, I declare, this is the teaching. It can be defied by the powers of hell. It comes through Yeshua HaMashiach. 
He says, and it is according to the revelation of the mystery. What mystery? Which was kept secret since the Olam. Do you hear that? It was kept secret since the Olam has the earth began. When Yah got a secret, he only departs it or he nothan, he puts it in certain men. And that's the truth. He's not putting it in these men today. I will prove that, Yisrael. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He says, but now the power of this living Torah, Yeshua, has been made known, Yara manifest. How? And by the Chitzve, the scripture, HaKodesh, the Navi and the prophets of the messengers of Yah, according to the commandment of the everlasting Abba, made known to who all nations. Why was the secret of Yahshua made known to all nations of Goim? Do you know why? Because Yisraya, his nation, he has put, he has scattered them in the midst of his af, his anger because they have sold the daughters. We have sold the minds of our babies unto this carnal lust, this fleshly passion. They don't give a damn about God because we don't give a damn. We can pretend. There's only one way the world knows that we are the, dis the Talmudim of Yahweh, that we have a great love. Hallelujah. One through one. Now, I don't want this damn thing we call love. They don't love me with it. It's filthy. It stinks. And that's a fact. I don't intend for you to be comfortable with me. Because I'm not comfortable. Woe unto those that are at ease and desire. You get all at ease and think, well, I, I'm above that you're a damn fool. I don't care who you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to this. Yisrael has been scattered to every nation, not just in the, in the Americas. You hear these fools that talk about the 12 tribes just being here. That's a lie from hell. He has put them. He said, this secret has been made known to all nations. Known to all goim. Why? For the obedience. For the shemak, for the obedience of the imunah. Because just like they did not know Yahshua Hamashiach, the princes and the powers of the air, and those that were in the authority to rule and to dictate, neither did they know Yahshua Hamashiach today. And they don't know the nation of Yisraya. They don't know the nation of Yisraya. And that's a fact. Are there some here? There's some in every nation. They're scattered abroad. And the hue of their skin colors from one extreme to the other, Yisraya. Their hair texture and all of that. And I will not condense in from that, all right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Romans 16, 27. He said to Yah, Almighty Yah, the only wise... He is the only one that is wise. Be kabod and praise is how through. We must praise Yah through Yahshua HaMashiach forever. Amen, amen, be it. And let that be fulfilled. And that's how we do it through Yahshua. We must do it through a living Torah. How, how, how could they shaha or worship Yah? It had to be according uh, to the construct, the mandate, the dictates uh, of Torah. And so we have a living, a, a renewed and a living way uh, in a living substance of Torah. Why? Because we can do it. Uh, we can bring the offering that is above uh, the red heifer or the sprinkling uh, of the ashes of the red heifer. Yeah. Offerings of Torah. What, what is greater than that? Ah. What is greater than the Zabak? The sacrifice of Todah. Because you don't feel like saying it, do you? No, we don't. There's nothing greater than that. So we have a renewed and a living. It is a way that is not just hide or the living life, Yah's substance, but it's Hayil. It is the way that brings uh, the strength of Yah's skillfulness of wisdom to teach us how to fight, to be warriors. 
that we are warriors. That's what chukmah is. It is the skillfulness of wisdom to fight the battle. So you know how to fight. So we know what the battle is about. We know who we're fighting for. That's what wisdom is. Come on, Yisra'ya. Only through Yeshua HaMashiach. Not through Jesus. Not through that damn lie. We are prostitute our children. The men that I hear from, the husbands I hear from, the wives I hear from. My husband just rejects this. My wife, I don't know what to do. What do I do? I say, you, live, you quit talking what you're supposed to be doing and start living it. Shut your mouth, man. That's your problem. You're not living worth a damn. She can't be impressed with that. What do I do, Rick? Shut your mouth, woman. Just be quiet. We are, we, we, are the, we, we are the light of, of this earth. We are the salt. And if we lo- lose the fragrance of the great desire for Yah, then the salt is, good, is tough for nothing. It is to be thrown out and travel under the feet. We are the light. We are the light of the earth. Of the Ola. So we let our light shine. We are the light. We are the city. That sit upon the hill. Come on. So shut your mouth, man. Shut your mouth, woman, and live it. And quit talking it. We got, all of us got game, as they would say in the day. You got game. But it means nothing. It means nothing. There's nothing more pristine than a wise man because he he is, he, he gets quiet. Fool loves to talk. There's one that, yeah, open up great. Revelation of the mysteries. His name is Hanach. We call him Enoch. I want to read from this writing of this great Nabi. Hanach 104 verse 9. I want to begin wicked. I mean, begin reading. And this, Yah began to reveal unto this Nabi, the great Satta, the mysteries and that he revealed unto this man for one nation, and that was for Yisra'ah, another nation. He speaks emphatically here with greats, greats. Beauty. He says here in Enoch, Hanak, 104 verse 9. He says, do not become wicked or rishia. Risha, not Rasha, but Risha, whereby your desire is to practice those things that rises up against Yah to defy Torah, to become a criminal. He says, do not become wicked in your levim, your hearts, Yisrael. He says, or do not lie or to speak Shekha, do not speak after the mind of the heart of Hashatan. He said, or alter to change to manipulate words of a just verdict a yasha verdict which is verdict which is straight that which is righteous and straight don't try to alter that yisraya from a risha a heart that is that is impregnated with every kind of wicked device he says oh, don't even utter falsehood lies against against the word of Yah, Almighty Yahweh, the great. Don't utter lies in the days. Yea, say the Lord thy God, he shall do that. He's going to go to your house in the Kalaka. Don't utter a falsehood or lie that Yah spoke to you and say, get some beans and rice, put it in barrels, and store it up. No. If anything, Yah speaks to us and tells us to eat the bread of life. Yoshua is the lechum, the life source of Yah. And you tell people to buy gold and to put back, you're a damn liar. We need to put this, get this imuna in us. And that comes by hearing the Torah of Yah. As they reveal those little beautiful intrinsic things to us, uh, we began to fashion ourselves according uh, to the words of the Torah. 
He says, do not utter lies or shekha against the Torah, against the Dabarim of Yah. He is great. He is Gadol. He is the Kodesh one. He says, or give praises to your idols, to those things that you have esteemed highly, those things that you have elevated in your mind. Don't do that, Israel. He said, for all, for all, go, everyone, for all your shekha, your lies, your false, your deceptions, and all of your rasha, your wicked, guilty, condemned ways are not for the righteousness of Yah, but because of great hatta, uh, great sin and great wickedness. That's what it is. But there's something that Yah reveals unto his nation. Hear me, Yisra'ya. He says, and now, and now, I know this mystery. I know this hidden concealed thing, this sata. Here's the mystery. For they, the sinners, the wicked man, the sinners, those that practice hatta, sin, what is sin? To defy, to transgress the Torah. Hear this. He said, here's the mystery. Now I understand. Now I see. They don't see but I see, he says, and now I know the mystery. For they, the sinners, shall alter, they shall change the verdict. And many sinners will take it to heart. This is what they will do. They will speak evil words and lies. They will speak ra, words that have come out of the belly of hell. And they will speak la shekha. He says, and they will invent fictitious. What is fictitious? It's a lie. Yeah. Jesus is a damn lie. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is a damn lie. Yeah. The Baptists are damn liars. The Methodists are damn liars. The Muslims are damn liars. Yeah. They will invent. They will create. They will orchestrate fictitious stories. Listen now. Quote, Jesus loved me, yes, I know. For the Bible but that me so. Listen to me. For they will create fictitious stories and write out my chitve hachodah. They will write out and write out my scripture. They will translate the scripture. How, my email? Based on the basis of their own words. They will interpret the scriptures in the basis of the Baptist way, the white man's way, the black man's way, the Jew man way, the Mexican way, the liar's way. Can I read that without stopping so you can get it? They will speak evil words and lie, and they will invent fictitious stories and write out my scripture on the basis of their own words. He said, that's the mystery. I revealed that to you. That's what you shall see. Do we not see that today? Everybody prophesying the same thing? And say, this is what Yah is saying. He is not telling them that. He is not telling them to prepare for the Illuminati's. He's not telling them that. He's not telling them the Offenheimers and the Bilderbergers and all of these that they're more afraid of them than they are Yah. Damn the Bilderbergers. Tell, the, tell all the Masons to go to hell. And if you want to know how they, the third degree is where they all meet, I was in it, uh, ignorant in my young days. Uh, they, they press on that third knuckle. How about that? How about that? All right? And yet they emphasize them more than they do Yah. He said, I'll show you a mystery. He said, that's good. They're going to create lies. They're going to create Christmas and Easter and false lies. They, they're going to denounce my, more of them. And they're going to create their own feast days and their own lies and their own corrupt ways. And they're going to write it out of my scripture because of their fictitious stories. That, that, that a rabbit is laying eggs and the eggs produce rabbits. Talk to me, Yisra, The Baptists do that and the Methodists do. This has nothing to do with y'all. What? 
the corruption upon his nation, his people, what shall be is because we have sold ourselves over unto whoredom, unto zana. Zana is a spirit. And I remember as a young preacher, you all can remember, you all been with me, that I would say there's only one thing that caused the devastation of a nation, especially young people, that Yahweh would destroy them is when they began to, to begin to commit whoredom. You will see his vengeance upon a nation of people, his people. There's nothing more vile that will become unfaithful. Man comes in the house, he kills wife and everybody. When That's the truth. No doubt about that. That is a vile thing. We sell our daughters. We chala. We cause their minds to become profane. Their offerings are not pure. We're dealing with something beyond the constraints of our flesh. And our flesh cannot reveal this to us. And these little boys out here, and all of these men, that they're reading from the same notes that all the other ones teach from, they take a bit and utilize that. I don't listen to these pigs, any of them. And that's just a fact. I never have, my bad. Never. Even when we were down here fellowship with this man, I didn't listen to him at night. And that's just the truth. I did not. Hallelujah. He says in verse 11, And would that they had written down all the words truthfully on the basis of their own speech, and neither alter nor take away from my word. They have done that. The Baptists, the Methodists, all of them, they have taken away from the Torah of Yah. It is not that they had done that, but they have. All of which I testified to them from the beginning. He says again unto the Nobi, I want you to yada another, I want you to understand this latter, this sata, this mystery, this thing that is concealed. It's not open unto every man. I've concealed it, I reveal it unto you. Yeah. He says uh, again, no another mystery. That to the Sadiq, the righteous, and the wise shall be given, listen, shall be given, shall be given the scriptures. Of joy. Do you hear that? Only to the righteous. In the midst of a great agony of man. Only to them. Yahshua is the Khitve. He is the word of Yah. And only in him shall we have or the Shimcha, the joy of great ecstasy of Yah. To the Sadiq will be given. No thani shall be bestowed upon them. Unto the Sadiq, just like he said to Ezra, he said, I give, I no fun, I bestow this upon you to understand the mystery of what shall be. He said, only them shall be given the scripture of joy for truth. What is truth? His daughter is truth. For truth and great hukmah. From that same hitve shall come the very truth of Yah and the very wisdom of Almighty Yahweh. It's not among the heathens and those that have taken the Torah and altered it and changed it. And there is no just, there is no just interpretation of what they are saying. He is not giving that unto these beasts of hell. These are children of darkness. Leave them alone, Yisrael. Let them go the way of Cain. You can't convince them. Hell, we haven't convinced ourselves. Hallelujah, I shall, my friend. I shall. So, so to them shall be given the Chitve HaChodash. And he says this in Hanak 104.13. I love this. This is the mystery. See, these liars don't know this. See, Yah has given us the Chitve, the scripture. Do we understand that? We don't. It has no value to us. He has no thorn. He has bestowed. He has taken that from his bosom. He has given us. Uh, to them shall be given the scripture. And they shall believe them. Yeah. That's all right. Yeah. To the Sadiq. They shall believe them. And he said they're going to be glad too. Yeah. In them. Yeah. They're going to believe Yahshua. They're going to be glad in him. Yeah. And all. Not some. He says, all oh, my friend, as you 
constantly reminds us. He says, call all the sadiq, the righteous ones who learn, who lamad, whose instructions have learned and comprehend from them. See, from scripture, we comprehend from scripture. He uses the word, the way, the derach, the way of truth. Shall we rejoice? There is only one truth. That is Torah is truth. For Yah Sadiq is Ulam Viyad. For the righteousness of Yah is everlasting. And your Torah is the truth. And from the Chidveimat, that is how we learn the truth. And then in that we began. What a great mystery. We're glad. We rejoice, Yisrael. Is that what Benny Hinn is talking? Is that what T.D. Jakes is talking? They're not talking like that. No, sir, no, ma'am. Mm -mm. They're not talking like Hanakia. And from that we shall rejoice greatly. And we shall delight in the Torah of Omari Yah. That's what we shall do. Uh, can you imagine someone like Baruch as he worked for Yeremiah? As his ears were so attentive unto every word that Yeremiah spoke, as he seen the very profound aura of Yah upon this mighty Nobi of Yah, he would see the supplication and the prayer of this man. Yah speaks to Baruch and says, Man, I want you to write in the book the things that I shall reveal. You know that they are truth because of Yeremiah. And there's a prayer of Baruch. I want to read this. Read Davi Baruch, second Baruch, 48 verse 1. Baruch says, and it happened after seven days. He said that I began to make, to feel wrath, a great urgency of prayer before Yah. He identifies him as the great mighty one. He says, and this is what I said to Yah. He says, oh, almighty Yahweh. He says, you are the one that summons the coming or the bow, the entering in. That which come to pass, the coming of not time or yam, but times of different times. He says, and they, even that time, stands before Almighty Yahweh. That's powerful. You tell me that the second stands before Yah? He said, even time stands before you. Listen. You cause the display of, uh, of great power of the worlds to pass away. And they do not. Because they cannot resist you. You raise up a man like Hugo Chavez. I was kind of sad to see that he had passed away. Yes, I really was. I like Mr. Chavez. I looked at the news article, such vile disrespect. It says, he, comma, is dead. What damn beasts. Had it been that dirty slut hole there by the name of Queen Elizabeth, this damn Jezebel, this vile whore of hell, they would have showed the greatest of reverence because she had robbed and raped the people. Mr. Chavez says, hell no. You're not going to rob the poor. He won the first presidential election with with 75% over his nearest rival. His second term, they say, well, he didn't do as well. The people are revolting. And he won by a 25% margin. Mr. Obama would love to have had that over Mr. Romney, escaping by the skin of his arse, wouldn't he? And so they vilified this man because he said to these wicked corporations, you dirty bastards, 
You rob our babies. You cause poverty. You take every damn dime. You cause them. And when the poor people in New York needed gas, uh, and when the, when, when the oil prices were going up, he said, I will give I will, those black people in the city, I will give them gas. I will, I will send it free. And he sent it to this nation. And so they vilified the man because uh, these vile, greedy bastards couldn't get in uh, and rob his nation. He wouldn't let them do it. And so they vilified him just like uh, they have done. This government is no different uh, than down there in Cuba. No different. It does a greater destruction on the people than the government of Cuba. And Mr. Chavez. And so when I saw that, I say, what devils? They didn't even have the decency and the honor. He is the head of state. And this is how they place it in the paper. He's dead. You let this dirty whore of Britain die. She's a Jezebel. You let this effeminate faggot dog that stepped down as he did the other day from the papery. These freaks, say what you want to. When, all, when they're raping your babies, you're going to defend them damn dogs? You rape your babies and rob them. These Jewish rabbis, uh, more of them in prison than, uh, the, 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 the Catholic bishops. Uh, raping your babies. That doesn't get put in the news, does it? Uh? Something that is predicated upon lies. Uh, they raise up this dirty, slutty whore called Mother Teresa. I was reading the other day that everything she did was a pack of lies. Uh. The millions she brought in, uh, she had no compassion for the people. But that's who they raised up. Of course, in order for you to become a saint, you got to, uh, you got to, uh, I'm glad I'm not a saint. Damn all saints. I'm one of the Kirusham, the elect, the Bohia of Yah. That you got to perform some kind of miracle. And so they, they brought her to sainthood early. Isn't that amazing? You change the rule, you alter the verdict for a dirty old whore like that? Oh, he said that about Mother Teresa. That slut, probably no telling what that Jezebel had done. I don't repent of it. Their damn idol worship and their gods has nothing to do with Yah. Yah dealing with the idolatry of his nation of Horam. That's what's going to cause him to wreak havoc on this wicked nation. Not what the damn Catholics are doing or the Muslims. He's going to cause his fire to burn because of the mockery of him from his people. Because we have shown the nations how to mock you. Oh, it's Jesus. It's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus in the morning. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. These damn dogs. And they're raping your babies. And these freaks that say they know Yah and they're sleeping with the women like damn dogs. They're liars. These dirty bastards. You can see why they don't. They're Mamsie, okay. I say Mamsie instead of bastard, all right. They don't love me. And I'm glad they don't love me. <clears throat> me move quickly. I got I to gotta get busy, Zakina. I'm on the clock. Hallelujah. He says here in, the, in verse 2 of the same chapter, 2 Baruch 42, Oh yeah, you summon the coming of the time that stand before you. You cause the display of power of the worlds to pass away and they do not resist you. You arrange the course of the periods and they obey you. Verse 3, only you, only Yah, knows the length of the generations. See, y'all know what the who is the generations. Well, it's 10 years, it's 50 years, it's not. Only y'all knows the length. I'm so glad he got some things in his hand. Only he knows the length of a generation, how the generation shall be, the length of the generations. And he says emphatically, and you do not reveal, you do not you do not open that, you do not reveal your secrets to many. He doesn't reveal his secrets to many. He does not. He did not reveal his secret to a hog like T.D. Jakes. A fat back, shit lit, eating dog. I don't know, a little effeminate freak like Benny Hinn. 
That's what he says. And you do not. You do not gila. You do not open up the intimacy. The gila, they are the intimacies of his secrets. You know you got things that you don't want nobody to know and you hold them up. Although they may be things that are agonized, but there are secrets you have that, are, that then when you think of them, they're beautiful. Uh. And he says these gilla, he does not reveal, he does not gala, he does not gala, he does not open them up to many. And many today are telling you how to prepare. There's only one way to prepare. That is walking in the light of how to ra. No other way. You can put about all the food you want to. It means nothing. You can learn how to survive off the earth. It means nothing. I've been doing intense studying on this nuclear, the fission, the fusion. That Chernobyl, it was a little town called Pripyat. It is a ghost town still today. The children within 150 kilometers, the men say all of them are sick. All of them. They built this huge sarcophagus over this one of the reactor that, that exploded. And if the other one had exploded, half of Europe would have been decimated. Half of it. So you tell me that the contamination in the soil for that little one reactor. What are you going to eat? We better allow y'all to feed us as that we said until I want no more. We're going to have to eat the bread. You can go to the fields. If you believe what these, they say that's going to be World War III, right? They're going to drop their nuclear bombs. Are they not? So where you go, what are you going to eat? Can you understand the radioactivity? I'll get to that. Let me move on. Hallelujah. Only you know the length of generations and you do not reveal, you do not gala, you do not even disclose or show yourself, uh, show your secrets uh, to many. He does not show his secrets to me at too many, to the abundance, too much. He don't show that to many, Yisrael. Few. I will show you where it begins with the secrets. Hallelujah. And you will know that where the secrets of Yah reveal. Can I speak to you that quickly? David says here in Tehillim Psalms 25 verse 14. Psalms. He uses the word sud here. It is an, the great intimacy of his secrets. Psalms 25 14. He says the secrets of Yah is with them that Yare, that reverent and fear him. And he will yada, he will show, cause them to learn, to understand. He will show them what? His bread, his covenant. These men today that are crying by grain, by gold, by beans and rice and put it back. What if you got beans and rice? You buy because it's cheap and you got enough money to buy it. But if you think that that's going to be your rescue, you are a fool. You are a flat out fool. The only thing that rescues Yisrael, yeah, we must understand his Brits. What is the Brits of Yah? It is his covenant. It is his allegiance, his alliance unto nation, his people. It is what his dabarim, his promises unto Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov, they are in the Brit, they are in his word. His word is his, his bond to Yisrael. He's not going to allow the world to destroy us. He's going to take us, as Azakain so prominently reminds us, he's going to take us to the Zara, to the trial of great tribulations and the fire. To get the dross out, Yisrael. That's a fact. <clears throat> and you think you're going to survive by having you some pork and beans uh, put up? You're wrong. Within 36 hours, the whole town of Pripyat, 43,000 plus, they were moved from the town. They had to go kill every cow, every hog, every dog, every cat. They had nearly 
hundred thousand soldiers just walking through the breath of the land, killing every dog, every cow. And the effect of that today is so vile upon the people. The average individual, there's a measurement called rungent. The average person that the nuclear radiation, they can only take five rungent a year to live. And that is the exposure of a nuclear reaction for a few moments. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And you're going to survive? We're going to survive. We'll talk about that, all right? The secrets of Yado saw the intimacy of his consolation, his counsel, his confidence. It's only with those that fear Yah. Well, we all say we fear him. That's not the truth. Every man doesn't Yah re Yah. We don't really fear Yah. We talk, we fear him. We truly don't fear him. We say we fear him. We do some of the most vilest, insidious things in the darkness of our minds. We allow that to counsel us. We lie to ourselves quite well, don't we? To make ourselves grand and look nice. We do that. And nothing more troubling when you deceive your own self. Yeah. You bewitch your own mind that you cannot even obey the truth. Is there a place of comfort for us? Sure it is. Can I remind us of his great kindness toward his nation? Who could speak this more emphatically than David? Psalms 91, verse 1. We all know this one. This is where we're going to take refuge right here. Hallelujah. He that dwells in the Sata, the covering, the secret place of the Most High, shall abide under the shadows of Almighty Yahweh, the Most Powerful. We shall dwell in the secret place. What is the secret place? Can I, can I give us emphasis on that? It is the knowledge of his Torah. It is the revelation of Yahshua. We're in him because he is in the Abba. If we dwell in him, if we are in him, we walk in him, as he has walked in the Abba, then we have fellowship with the Abba and him, if he loved him, as he has loved the Abba. So we must dwell in that secret. The princes of this world, the power, they didn't know Yahshua, did they? So they cannot identify the body today. So we hide ourselves under the sill, the wings of Almighty Yah. Like an eagle that stretches out his wings. We hide ourselves under the wings, the cell, the cell of Almighty Yahweh Yisrael. We dare, do we dwell in the secret knowledge of Yah, the thoughts of Yah, that the world cannot comprehend. They have altered that. This is our comfort. His truth. His purpose for us. Hallelujah. That we may walk right before him. The knowledge of his Torah. Shalom on all of his wickedness. He understood this in Proverbs 3.32. Proverbs 3.32. He talks about the lutz at the forward. We all got that. He says for the forward of the lutz, those that turn aside and turn away. Proverbs 3.32. Mishli 3.32. He says that the forward is uh, an abomination to a bar, a vile thing to Yah. But his secret, do yeah. not say his secrets now. His secret, his suit, his intimacy of his knowledge, his secret, he says, is with not just anybody. They're with the Yasha, the upright. Those that walk justified. They are just in all of their actions, their deeds, and their ways are just because he has justified them. Yah has. Uh, he says, but his secret, his secret now, his secret, not secrets, but that sword, that revelation of Yahshua, it is with those that are upright. That's who it's with. He has given purpose to us, Yisra'ya, his secrets, his knowledge, his truth. <clears throat> And we must understand the secret purposes of Omar Yah, his, his sota. We must, because it calls us to do or to fashion ourselves according to the Torah. In the book of wisdom, Shalomo, he gives us a profound wisdom of that. The book of wisdom 2, 22. He says, as for the secret purposes of Yah, as for the secret purposes of Yah, 
They knew him not. They knew them not. We don't know that. Neither take for hope for the wages of righteousness. They cannot discern there is no knowledge, uh, a reward of the blameless nephesh. He says, Yahweh created man to be immortal. And he made him to be an image of his own eternity. That's what he made man for. But he's mad that he's mindful of him. Why do you think the enemies of hell rage, Yisraya? He made him to be in his eternal image. It says this, Nevertheless, through envy of Hashatan, the devil, came death into the world. And they that do whole of his side do experience it. So you tell me those that hold to the side of Hashatan, he speaks here for the purpose of Yah and his secrets. That he revealed that he made us to be immortal. And man still doesn't understand that. And he made us in his eternal image. You know that's a secret. Man doesn't understand that. He said in those that behold to Hashatan, they shall taste death. They're going to die. We do not hold fast the secrets of Yah, his truth. That it calls us to fashion ourselves in the Torah. When he reveals things to us, uh, we must be complicit. We must comply to what he commands us. Uh, we can walk like a damn fool or we want to warn to us. We can, we can, we can, uh, we, we can appropriate this self-grandizing appeal of ourselves uh, and say I'm nice and I'm kind, I'm sweet, I'm loving. It doesn't mean anything to you. You can talk all you want to. It means nothing. When a man possess the essentials, uh, you don't have to talk about it. Others will talk about it. When you talk about it, it's not worth value, right? Uh, because you don't have anything. Because if you did, you would esteem him as being righteous more than you do me. So you don't have anything, all right? I don't back down. Not one bit. I have a few more. Let me move quickly. I want to. I told Zachin Yaramaya, I need about an hour and a half. Really, I need three hours for this message, but I. Kind of rushing through, but that's all right. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 In the book of Amos, Amos 3, 7, who reveals the secrets to? It says in Amos 3, 7, Amos, surely the sovereign Almighty Yahweh, he will do nothing. But he must first, or he, gala, he reveal his secret to his servant his Eben, the Nobi, true prophets, true messengers that are the mouthpiece of Yah. These men are not the mouthpiece of Yah. They're not speaking after the will of Yah. They're not speaking. Anytime you got these individuals on every corner talking about Jesus and Lord God and God and talking about what's going to take place and what's going to happen and what you need to do and what they are not doing themselves. And that's just a fact, Yisraya. He does nothing. First, until he reveals, he gala, he opens up the great nuggets of his truth uh, unto the true messages. That's why you hear me all the time. I pray, Yah, raise up the nobi, the prophet of Yah. I'm not a prophet. You're not a prophet either. You're in the same clone as Benny Hinn and all the rest of them. You read the same kinds of books. You call on the, how can you be any different than being a hen? You call yourself a Hebrew and you call on a damn Jesus. You painted yours black uh, and been a head and got his white. How about that? You can talk all that talk you want to. It doesn't mean a damn thing. And yet you got a Hebrew name. You call upon a damn pagan Lord. He does nothing but he first reveal. His secret unto the Nobi. Can I show you an example of that in the book of Baruch, Second Baruch? Quickly. Second Baruch 54.1. Baruch says, And I asked Omar Yah, the mighty one, and said, This is what Baruch says to Yah. You know, Omar Yahweh, you know, you knew the heights of the world beforehand, before you created it. 
and that which will happen in the times which you will bring about. Yah brings all this about. It's not what the Catholic whole house does for the Muslims. He brings it about. He brings it about. You hear the Nabi speaking here? He does nothing but that he first reveal his secret, his suit, the intimacy of his heart, the things that are valuable he doesn't trust with many. He raises up a prophet, a messenger, and he speaks. And so he says, and you are the one that bring us, uh, uh, you bring about how? By your Torah. He brings everything about by his word. Nothing happens but by the word of Yah. So do you see anywhere in the world where, where it's talking about the Club of Rome or the Illuminati uh, or the Catholic whole house? Where are the colors, all those colors, and I, I began teaching that. I'm going to have to get back and teach it again. All those colors that deal with the garments of the, uh, the Leviticus or the Kohan, that's all the colors of Yisrael. There's seven prominent hills in that land we call Yisrael. And they want to say, well, it's the, it's the Catholic whole house. It has nothing to do with Yah. He's dealing with the people that's rebellious. Huh? He brought them out of the land. When he left Mizraim alone, he dealt with his people. He didn't go back and deal with Mizraim. He dealt with the wicked house. They brought in every kind of God. They went out. They said, well, we'll build us one. And then we will say, surely this is the one that has brought us out of the bondage of Egypt. That's what they did with the golden calf. That's what they did with Jesus and the law. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, and against the works of the inhabitants of the earth, he said, you hasten the beginning of the times and the ends of the periods, you alone, only Yah knows, Yisrael. He knows the ends of the times and the beginning. Baruch says in verse 2, you are the one who, you are the one for whom nothing is hard. I like that. There's nothing too hard for Yah. He said, you're the one where there's nothing is hard. But you are, however, the one who easily accomplish all that you do by a, an oath, a sign to his nation. He doesn't give the sign to every man. He gives it to his people, his nation, the remnant of the whole, only they will know. He said, you are the one to whom both the depths and the heights come together and whose word the beginnings and the period serve. Everything serves Yah. Everything serves his word, Yisrael. He said, you are the one who reveals. See, open up. You reveal. That's what a secret is. You reveal to those who fear that which is prepared for them so that you would comfort them. So he reveals. He makes known unto those that fear him the things that shall be that we may prepare ourselves. And it's not by frying up all the chicken or buying all the beans you can buy. It is buying the truth and wisdom and knowledge and selling it not. You show your mighty works to those who do not know. You pull down the enclosure for those who have no experience and enlightenment in this whole shack in the darkness. And you reveal, you reveal, you you uncover, you make known, you reveal, listen, not secret, secret. There's a S there, so that's plural. You reveal your secrets to those who are spotless. Was Yahshua spotless? He was without blemish. He's not revealing this to this world, Yisrael. You better hear me. He is not. You reveal your secrets, not a secret, but your secrets to those who are spotless, without spot and blemish. To those who subject themselves to you, listen now, and your Torah in faith. How is it that these thumpers of liars know the secrets of Yah? This identify who he reveals it to. You show this vision to your Ebed, your servant. Open to me its exposition 
also. He does nothing but that he reveal his secrets unto his servant, the Nobi. Men that are spotless without the passion to sin and to do wickedly. Let me close with this last verse. That's more, but I want to close with this. I went over. It says in Yeshaya 53, 1. The Nobi says, who has believed our report? Who has believed the record of Yahshua, of Yah? And to whom is the arm of Yah revealed to? Is it revealed to every man? No, sir, it's not. He does not got lie. And Yahshua is the arm of Yah. He is the right hand. He is the yam of Yah. He doesn't reveal his secrets to everyone. I'm teaching this tonight because Yah, your prayer, he gives me strength, gives me strength and wisdom to begin. I got something that I'm almost intimidated to teach it, but I will, beginning on the Shabbat. That's why it's important to understand words and what they mean. Not according to your vernacular, but you must understand the concept and the inception of a word. And I want to show us something beginning on Shabbat. I want to show you Yisra'ah, his secrets, his sota. He doesn't reveal this to these unclean men that are wicked and vile and insidious, unto those that are spotless, unto those that love Torah and the wisdom of Torah. That's it. And these men today that are telling you all these things, the Lahays, and all these pseudo prophets, all these pseudo boys that are saying the same, the, everybody. Is saying the same thing. I don't talk like them. Don't want to talk like them. I never believed their prophecies and the way they prophesy because I knew that they were not the Nabu'ah of Yah. They were not the Nabu'ah. The utterance of Yah's Ru'ach or the revelation of Yah's visions make known or that which has been written revealed or the life of that is real and one. When one speaks it, it is profound. And so I never wanted to speak like them Never have spoken like them. Never did go the course of these. Uh, never, never. You've never heard me talk that crazy talk. You're going to get a chip and, a, a, and you, they're going to, that's so stupid. H how do you even develop the logistics to do that? You know, it's so, so, so stupid. That's not how it is. It's something be greater than a chip. And when this subliminal, this laba, this thing we call the lev, yeah, the powers of hell, just like that chip that was in Yahudas Iscariot, it says, then Hashatan entered. The word enter is boo. He proceeded forth. He entered into him. And with the strength of that man, He's trying to seek out Mr. Raya. He's trying to infuse that mind with every mind. Yah says the mind shall be open. And when that mind takes power, they shall raise, they shall raise the, with the consider against Yah. They shall, they shall, they, sh they shall, as Gilyana says, uh, even when the terror of Yah is written upon them, they're not going to repent. They're going to rail from hell and curse him. They're going to defy Yah. You think a damn chip is going to make you do that? What are you going to buy? Tell me what you're going to buy. There's a nuclear What are you going to buy? Hell, a Cadillac? That's stupid. What, where are you going to get food? You let a little snow happen in a little town like this, the stores are clean. Can you imagine someone like New York City? That's insane. What are they going to do in Detroit? What kind of system you're going to have uh, to trust? Well, that is so damn stupid. But everybody buys that because it's a fictitious story. But the Torah doesn't say that. How are they going to buy? How are they going to sell? How are you going to buy and sell? With what? With gold and silver barter? What the word kasef is gold. It's same thing. It's silver kasef. Same thing as money. Same word, money in the Hebraic language. Silver is kasef, kasef. It means money. Same thing. How you gonna buy? By the way, what you gonna buy? 
You're going to buy some contaminated cow meat to feed your babies? I was telling my it show that Chernobyl, let me say this. Can I dismiss that game? That these men, there that were, that were nearly half a million people that worked on that Chernobyl. They brought them from everywhere. You must understand that the land mass of Russia is bigger than the United States, really. But they have less than half the population, about 140, 50 million people. They don't have babies there like they do in, in the Western world or in African places like that. They don't have babies. Countries are massive, but they don't have babies. I listened to these men talk about as they were tr doing this tunnel nearly uh, a mile long to put this system of refrigeration under that magnesium because it was, it was causing death everywhere. And they were working. They didn't even know the death. I remember that when it happened in, in, in 86. I remember that vividly. He said one of his friends swallowed one grain of the sand that, that, that had, that was a nuclear particle or that, and he died instantly. They had to scrub each other's back. They could only work in a certain place two or three minutes. And all of them is totally obliterated out of the history of Russia they, and Ukraine. They don't even write about that. And many have died. There were 20, there were 26 or 36 firemen that when that magnesium, when that blaze went up, they went to try to put it out. The fire, I mean, it was nothing they could do. Within four months, all of them were dead. So I'm simply saying, this is going to be, and I got the statistics on the nuclear armaments of all nations. These are some mad nations, Russia, France, Britain, America. They're wicked. These are damn dirty dogs, and y'all's going to kill them bastards. He's going to say, come on, fire it. You try to find my people, but you're not going to. Come on, he's got the hedge around us. You understand? <clears throat> That's a fact, Israel. And they died by the millions. I mean, by the hundreds of uh, hundreds, thousands. And babies are sick today. Sick. They cut hay from the field. And the, the, uh, and the radiation that's in that hay is crazy. But what else can they do? They're poor people. What else can they do? So we're going to survive of some beans in the field? The soil contaminated? This is one state that nuclear waste dumped here. This is one state they will definitely take out if Russia began to fire a bomb. What are they going to do in those big cities when they drop? Where, where, where are they going to go? What are they going to buy? What are they going to do for them? What is Mr. Goldberg going to do with all them billions he got here? That means nothing. He's going to jump out of one of, them, one of the Trump towers there. What is Mr. Trump going to do? Well, how, come on. If we believe the scenario they're teaching, they're liars. May you all. We, we do greet you all, our friends, and we appreciate you all joining us. We have things to share with you on this Shabbat evening, but we will share that with you. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all. I intended to go an hour, 15 minutes, but got a little carried away and could not get all I wanted in. You understand? Uh, this is the message that I must take and teach line upon line. I just kind of rushed through it. But this is a message that is much more profound than the activities or the energy that, that I inserted tonight. It must be taught line upon line. It's great wisdom in this Yisraya. And then if I take my time methodically and teach it, then you will understand the great mysteries. Yeah. Let us stand to our feet. Ya you all Yisraya, may his riches rest upon you all. We turn toward your Rosh Aim as long as we are in this Shabi. In all things, Yah, we barak you for your mercies, your kindness. We do barak you for Yisraya. We pray for your nation, your people. You strengthen, you watch over, you heal. Your, you are Ya Rafa. We pray you take Yisraya home safely. Watch over them on the roads, the highways. Protect us all. Give us rest. Give us great sleep of great sweetness tonight in Yahshua's name. Bless those that have joined us on the live broadcast. Touch and strengthen all we ask in the blessed assurance of the only name. We pray for Yerushalayim. We pray for your people scattered abroad under every nation, under every government, that they may live and be able to live a life that is quiet and full of shalom. We ask all this in Yeshua's mighty name and from the depths of our bosom, our hearts, we shout hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Ya